PSIR gives you perspective. A very broad perspective to understand the world. Right? India also and the world also. And also the philosophy of great mind. Good morning everyone, this is Dr. Bijendra Jha, I teach PSIR as optional paper. Today I'll tell you how PSIR paper is important and how to prepare optional paper like PSIR and why PSIR is important to you know for the your GS paper. So let me begin with the success rate. If you see the optional paper, there are a series of optional paper like sociology, public administration, physics, mathematics, chemistry, and so on and so forth. And if you see the success rate among the optional paper, PSIR stood second. The most uh, success rate actually observed in the optional paper physics. But after the physics, it is a PSIR which gains maximum number, maximum score in optional paper. And if you look at optional paper, it is very crucial in dealing with your GS paper. It helps a lot, not only the four GS paper, but also essay paper and finally interview. So let me tell you how, you know, PSIR paper will help you. And if you see that the most, you know, the secured and good position for the IAS, IPS or IRS, you need good marks in your optional paper as well as in your, um, in your GS paper. So let me begin how and why PSIR is important for your study and how it will lead your success first and then I'll tell you about you know why PSIR will help you a lot and how to prepare it. Let me begin with why PSIR paper will help you a lot. Now if you look at PSIR political science and international relations you know it has two paper right paper one and paper two right now in this paper if you look at there is section a and there is a section b right and section a consists you know political theory right political theory then state and theory of state i say theory of state right and Second paper involves, you know, includes Indian national movement, Indian national movement, Indian constitution, constitution, and secondly, you know, if you go deeper, India's development. Right, economic development and planning and then political party and then social movement. Now let me tell you this position, this portion right, will help you in, in you know history part. Right, if you look at the GS paper 1, paper 1 which includes history and modern history is very crucial for UPSC in men's and as well as in Limbs. So this will help you in history GS paper 1, right? Now the second portion will help you in GS paper 2. GS paper 2. Now if you look at GS paper 2, it is a purely <coughs> secured, right? When you go through the PSIR, for example, constitution, social justice, governance, right? That is covered by this section B, right? But this section part, section B, will help you a lot when you will you know understand the concept like equality the concept like you know rights right that is very important to understand the polity right like democracy right so section a makes a ground right for the section b and the paper two if you see you know, so GS paper 2 is entirely captured by, you know, sec section B. Apart from it, if you look at GS paper 1, if you see that Indian society, 
Indian society part, right? Indian society part is covered by this section B of the paper one, right? For example, in section B paper one, there is a topic called caste, class, religion. That is the important part in your Indian society to understand Indian social system and how religion or the caste or you know class play a crucial role right so it is covered right now come to the gs paper 3 where indian economy right indian economy especially the you know uh, macro economy is covered from the part b and we study india's economic development right so it will help you in gs paper part 3 right now come to the paper 2 here we you study you know again here there, there is a section a and section b section a is comparative politics comparative politics which is very much a static one right and only full toss ball comes here you just make a six or four now section b right then section a also covers international relations it's a theoretical part and it will help you in understanding international relations and section b covers you know india's foreign policy basically how india interact with the world now if you see that it you know foreign policy international relation is a part of gs gs um, 2 right and if you look at GS paper 4, GS paper 4 is covered by the this theoretical part, especially the WPT. That is, WPT is a part of the paper 1. Right? So let me you know make a list of how PSIR helps you in, in your GS. PSIR is the only optional paper which covers approximately 70% of your GS paper. And in GS paper 1, GS paper 1, if you look at modern Indian history, right, covered by covers covered by section B of the PSA paper 2, paper 1, which I have discussed, then Indian society, right, is covered by again the section B of the paper one, right? Now, if you look at GS paper two, GS paper two, here you can see that polity, governance, social justice, and international relations covers by your PSI optional. So it helps you a lot. Now come to the GS paper 3, GS paper 3, here you can see that economic development or economic development. Now then if you look at some part of environment and ecology, environment and ecology, because we'll deal with environmental movement, right? In India right so some part GS paper 3 now come to the GS paper 4 and if you see the GS paper 4 here paper 4 now if you see <coughs> the ethics which is a crucial in securing and getting good mark now theoretical part like helps by PSI optional if you look at the Socrates. Socrates is known as father of ethics, and many statement given by Socrates directly comes or falls in ethics paper. Let me give you one example: unexamined life. For example, one question: unexamined life is not worth full living. This question has come in ethics paper and this is a statement given by Socrates. So, so here we do Socrates, here we do Plato, here we do uh, you know Aristotle, 
right then where we do utilitarian philosopher like you know you know here uh, german bantam bantam who had given principle of utility right and that is js mill followed him and revised his idea of utilitarianism right how why we should go give importance to anything for example law right or how we should give preferences you know answer is utility if things are you know good for the larger society we should opt that right and then we study you know many philosophers like you know john locke right who were pioneered the liberal ideas like liberty equality rights right so john locke we studied thomas hobbes right we studied karl marx to understand the view of the you know sub you know workers laborers right and how capitalist system works basically so you know then han arend right he was, he was a most ordained critique of totalitarianism of the 20th century that is mores in italy germany and ussr so if you see this ethics paper covered by your psir and the last but not the least if you look at essay paper right now essay paper has two part part 1 and part 2 right and if each part has four questions right now if you see if you see the four, four last 10 years essay paper questions question bank and you can find that you know approximately four to five questions right, last to last year out of eight seven questions in essay paper was from philosophy political philosophy right and direct statement by the philosophers like hegel had given you know a statement that rational is real and real is rational was directly there in the essay paper so this question why we should opt psir as optional paper is very much clear right now la lastly if you look at interview that is called personality test again pt right here psir gives you perspective a very broad perspective to understand the world right india also and the world also and also the philosophy of great mind right like great mind of the west like plato aristotle socrates marx john locke hanya arendt john rawls but also the great mind of india like dharma shastra buddhism artha shastra gandhi ambedkar orbindo and so and so far so here concept is very clear that if you see the psir as optional paper it is always beneficial you are at always disadvantage by taking psir as optional paper right so this question has been resolved i hope it's clear to you now let me move to the next question right how to prepare psir optional now if you see the how to prepare your psir optional right first you must look at few ingredients before you start preparing and that ingredients are three that ingredients are three that is written here now first a step is to inquire the psir syllabus and the previous year questions previous year questions that is important and at least you know from the last 10 year for example you know 2014 to 2023 you must look at what are the what are the type of questions what are the varieties of questions that appears in upsc questions right and then you know 
you must go thorough syllabus what are the syllabus and what are the questions first and then thoroughly study the theme and sub theme from your syllabus very thoroughly right and the third you know you know you must have some good books right but if you see books has not been written from the perspective of uh, upsc books had already written in from the perspective of university students so there are you know lots of books that you need to consult but when you take a good good teacher a good mentor he will not allow you to go directly to the consult book but he will give you a good notes that is notes is very important right ready made notes is very important right to access the vast syllabus in a very short span of time right now then you know writing is very important let me tell you writing practice writing practice is very important right now let me tell you uh, this is the major core thing that one should consult before they start preparing psir as optional right so i will go through this all i will talk about the psir syllabus and i will also talk about the previous year question i'll give you some glimpses about the psir questions and then i'll talk about you know the themes and sub themes as i'll go through the syllabus and i'll talk about the notes which we provide at pilotus is and i gave you know early notes early notes means if you see i before i begin the class i give notes on that topic which i am going to discuss right this is the method i opt you know i just distribute notes among the students they study at home and then come and then we discuss in the class and again i follow the dictation right i dictate the students and they write in their notebook and i also suggest that okay you go to the notes also and if you find good you know theme supporting theme some argument just you also write that and that notes is not it's very thin and very precise right right then i also teach how to write writing practice is very important in you know getting good mark because it's all about writing so let's go in detail now if you see the basic you know preparation strategy or basic stages in upsc you all know that there is a prelims then there is a mains and there is a interview right and in prelims you have gs paper 1 and gs paper 2 right and gs paper 1 is actually very crucial right gs paper 2 that is the sat and where you need only qualifying mark right now apart from the mains if you look at there are language paper now let me move to the this part now if you see the mains examination pattern you know uh, you need compulsory indian languages right and then one english this is only qualifying it is not added to your final mark right then you have gs paper 1 gs 2 gs 3 gs 4 right and each paper is devoted to 250 marks right 250 marks and 3 years or sorry 3 hours not years 3 hours for each paper that you will given to write right and then essay paper right again 3 hours and 250 marks right so if you see that you know 250 marks then 1000 250 marks for a essay 1000 marks for gs and again if you look at optional you see that 500 250 each right 250 for optional paper you know each optional paper has two paper right so paper 1 and paper 2 so paper 1 had assigned 1250 marks for 3 hour, you know a time allocated is 3 hours and so you have 500 marks now if you look at these are the writing and the entire is 750 marks that is actually allocated to the mains right that is evaluated and added in the final list and apart from it if you look at 
there is a personality test 275 marks right so total you have 2025 marks and if you secure 50 percent that would be enough to get entry into the final list of the upsc right that gives you happiness but let me tell you the syllabus are so vast right so vast that we need to take a strategy to how handle this vast syllabus of the upsc and that is very very important now let me move to the let me move to the inquired syllabus and previous year questions papers which i told you initially that we will inquire into this in syllabus and pre pyqs now if you see before we go through just i told you that paper one paper one paper two the psir paper optional has paper one and paper two and paper one and again has section a and section b section a consists political theory indian political thought western political thought political ideology political concepts right political concepts like you know file like state you no know, rights equality uh, power power so if you look at this state equality rights democracy helps you in understanding polity better right this concepts equality rights power democracy helps you in understanding your polity better right it gives you good good capture a good hold on your polity part now indian government and politics helps you a lot right right now section paper 2 has again two section section a has competitive politics and section b is actually about india's foreign policy right now let me go in detail and if you see the section a of the paper one and if you see the syllabus now first topic is political theory meaning and approaches right and second is theory of state now there are different theory of state let me tell you there is a liberal theory of state then there is a you know even the new liberal theory marxist theory pluralist theory post colonial theory feminist theory right but we teach more for example organic theory of state organic theory of state right or like for example mechanistic theory of state right so we teach little larger than the syllabus so that a student be feel comfortable right in examination now if you look at concept of justice right and we need to study justice a special reference to the rawls theory but let me tell you the term justice starts you know <clears throat> with the plato and plato was the first philosopher who talked about justice in the west and comprehensively he discussed what is the idea of justice right in his book called the republic then uh, rawls theory had been criticized by many philosopher right we need to study feminist critique we need to study communitarian critique we need to study how new liberal criticize john rawls then if you look at equality right what is social equality political equality economic equality what is the relationship between equality and liberty equality and freedom right because sometimes it is said that equality and freedom are antagonistic right when you brings everyone equal it is actually creates problem in liberty freedom right but when you give freedom right then if you look at there is a rise of inequality so equality and freedom always comes in conflict what is that conflict is it that this conflict necessary or there is a some you know some complementary and supplementary relationship between equality and freedom can they cooperate so then we'll talk about affirmative action right affirmative action is a state policy to you know bring disadvantaged social group you know at the par and make the society more egalitarian now then next is rights and there are different meaning of rights like sometimes we call natural right fundamental right you know legal right moral right what are the difference of this, 
of these rights what are the differences between these rights so here rights uh, will be studied rights um, shall be discussed in very comprehensive manner right so and there is a different theory of rights there is a concept of human rights apart from it there is a democracy and there is a you know comprehensive theory of democracy we need to study different models of democracy somewhere it is a participatory democracy somewhere it is a deliberative democracy right how you know sometimes it is called formal democracy sometimes it is called substantial democracy so here democracy is important concept in your syllabus then the concept of power right power hegemony ideology and legitimacy right then indian you know political ideology like liberalism socialism marxism feminism gandhism right now if you see that we are living in the age of ideology when someone speaks a student asks sir which ideology you belongs to right is it necessary to and present in a particular ideology it is necessary to be liberal alone or you can free from this ideology right so there is a debate on ideology but if you see that when we speak people identify that you are belongs to this ideology then if you see the ninth topic indian political thought and here is three tradition in ancient india dharma shastra artha shastra and buddhist tradition right as far as modern thinker is concerned sir sayyed ahmed khan in is your syllabus arvindo am k gandhi b r ambedkar am aman roy then 10th topic is plato aristotle machiavelli hobbes locke js mill marx gramsci and hanaran now let me tell you this is the most comprehensive part in the section a that is called western political philosophy or western political thought and here we need to discuss 10 political philosopher like for example uh, let me tell you for example in wpt in wpt what are the things that we need to discuss right right in the, your syllabus begins with plato and aristotle let me tell you you cannot understand plato without understanding socrates right and these all three are called greek trios all three are called greek trios and if you see the greek trios played a very important role in strengthening political philosophy right and then if you see later on we study machiavelli right what is called as a father of modern political thought and then i start you know ipt indian political thought right and i teach dharma shastra dharma shastra you know uh, artha shastra and buddhism buddhist thought so that we can compare the ancient political ancient thought in the western society and the ancient thought in india and what machiavelli is talking uh, you know in the you know 15th century after the renaissance if you look at artha shastra quatelli has talked about the same quatelli has talked about the on the similar line right that power is very important in politics right so and apart from the, this you know one study like for example uh, hobbes locke and rousseau again rousseau is not your in syllabus rousseau is not in syllabus but rousseau is very very important to understand the modern human relations modern you know society like france look at olympic is going on in france right and in the olympic if you see that that begins with some thematic you know exhibition of the french revolution you cannot understand french revolution without understanding rousseau right and all three are called you know social contract theorist trio social 
contract theorist so you had trio like socrates plato and aristotle you have trio here if you look at this trio we need to study in western political thought right so in western political thought we need to study a lot right and it takes lots of time right now move to the move to the syllabus part then i'll talk about the questions and if you see the syllabus part yeah the syllabus part here section b that is called indian government and politics but it is more right it is precisely written as indian government and politics but it is more now if you see the first topic that is indian nationalism right and we begin indian nationalism with you know the activities of the constitutionalism or constitutionalist like the indian national congress in the moderate age right so they you know indian nationalism we talk about political strategy of india's freedom and struggle so early moderate for example 1885 to 1905 the moderate has different the strategy to fight against british injustice but after that if you should look at there is a extremist 1905 to 15 if you see that there was a extremist and then you know there was a in 1915 there was a reunion of the congress in lucknow session and then gandhi took the role right or lead leadership in india's freedom struggle and he played a very important role in shaping india's freedom movement right so we discuss uh, this all and then we talk about you know the gandhi's role in non cooperation movement civil disobedience movement and apart from this there was a militant and revolutionary movement against british government right that is not often talked about but we will discuss it is very important to talk about the revolutionary who took weapon to throw out the british government and then peasants and workers peasantry has their own you know annoyance with british government and they had their own strategy to fight against british government and so the workers have their own strategy right and secondly we need to understand indian indian national movement about the perspective indian national movement had been seen by many philosopher in different ideology right so you have liberal socialist marxist radical humanist dalit perspective feminist perspective feminist perspective of india's national movement and now this part will help you in gs paper one which i have already stated in the very early stage of this video now if you see the here's you know topic number 2 begins with the making of india's constitution right and there since there's two if you see that all are you know going to help you in strengthening your indian polity so shall in features of the indian constitution preamble fundamental rights fundamental duty you know parliamentary system and amendment judicial review and basic structure doctrine right principal organ of the union government right principal organ of the state government then grassroots democracy look at that panchayati raj municipal corporation significance of 73rd and 74th amendment to the constitution grassroots movements in india and then if you look at here in the sixth topic which is very important it is about the constitutional body and non constitutional bodies right so here we need to study you know constitutional body like election commission like cag like finance commission like upsc like national commission for scheduled caste national commission for scheduled tribe national commission for backward classes but apart from the constitutional body we need to focus also on non constitutional body like or a statutory body that you call like national commission for women national human right commission right national commission for minorities this commissions national commission for protection of child right ncpcr this commission 
these commissions are very important right for your polity but for your this paper also then we talk about you know federalism is a part of your syllabus and very important for your polity right then if you look at planning and economic development basically we focus on nehruvian and gandhian perspective of development and then talk about the role of planning commission you know the green revolution land reform agrarian relations right liberalization you know liberalization globalization privatization that is called lpg liberalization privatization and its impact on india's economy and society at large right and then this is going to help you in, in you know writing indian society paper and the most important is look at the caste religion ethnicity this is very important for your indian society purpose and here also then party system we have national party then state party then this party have their ideology they have their leaders they have their support base they have their manifesto they have their policies and programs right so very interesting about the political party you know what are the factors on which voters vote in election right does it cast which matters in voting behavior in india or is it something religion or is it something leadership or is it something economic schemes and programs or is it something that you know call welfareism or new welfareism lavarthi right so there are many you know things that is important in studying indian politics and apart from it if you look at the second next topic that we are going to talk about that is indian social movement right here human rights movement women's movement again this is going to help you in indian society right environmentalist movement is part of your gs paper 3 so if you look at the paper 1 the syllabus is really vast and whether you ignore or you you know wish to pursue psir but let me tell you you will encounter these topics in your gs paper here and there but if you pursue your psir paper your idea will be more powerful more strengthened and more clear in attempting upsc now apart from you know now look at the paper 2 and paper 2 and if you look at paper 2 here there is a comparative politics right so how we compare and why we compare politics open parliament of india is compared with parliament of britain or indian president is compared with india's prime minister right indian executive and right so in indian comparative politics we study what are the methods to study comparative politics and then we talk about a state which is overlap with the paper 1 a state will study there a state we study here also then if you look at again overlapping politics of representation and participation it is overlapping like political parties pressure groups we will discuss there then globalization right response for developing and developed nation right globalization we will we will study in paper 1 also so paper 1 has many you know topic which has overlapping with the paper 2 then approaches to international relations here you see there are different different approaches like idealist approach realist approach marxist approach functionalist approach right system theory then key concepts in international relations right now if you look at key concepts like what is national interest right what is national interest what is the balance of power right what is you know power and deterrence what is soft power what is smart power what is sharp power right there is a different conception of power that has been talked by several scholars and it's very interesting right now the next if you see the you know changing in international political order and here we discuss you know the rise of the superpower like us and ussr and how they you know actually con- made a conflict the cut that is called hot that is cold not hot but cold war right as we study cold war we study arms race we study non alignment movement right and collapse of the soviet union right and how world has become unipolar and then we talk about the international economy right international political economy that we say right it's like example wto 
IMF, World Bank, right? IMF, World Bank, WTO that we study. And that's a very important part in your examination view. Then UN, again, if you look at the, you know, UN is very important. Then regionalization of politics like Asia, ASEAN, EU, APEC, SARC, NAFTA, that comes every day in your newspaper. You encounter India's relations with the world, right? And contemporary global concerns like democracy, human rights, environment, gender justice, terrorism, and nuclear proliferation. So this is a section A of the paper two. Now let me quickly go through the section B of the paper two. And if you see the quickly, right? Now if you look, that is India's foreign policy, determinants of foreign policy. What are the institutions that is shapes India's foreign policy? Then India's contribution to the NAM, non-alignment movement, different phases. What are the relevance of NAM today? Then India and South Asia, right? Regional cooperation like SARC, what is the SAFTA, right? Then India's locust policy. Now we are talking about, you know, activist policy. Policy. Then what are the impediments in cooperation in India's neighboring, right? For example, look at the insurgency and terrorism. Right, the intra river water disputes. Then, if you see that illegal, illegal cross border migrations, ethnic conflict, insurgencies, border disputes that India have in its neighboring, you know, in its surrounding. Now, then India and the global south, right? So, India relations with Africa and India relations with Latin America is very important to understand. And they, the global south has made several demands. You know, if you see the G20 of the last year, you know, India made possible for the African Union to be member of the G20, right? So that we need to understand. Then India and global center of power, for example, India, US, India, Russia, India, Japan, India, China. These are the very important tab topic. Then next is India and United Nations. Now, if you look at section B, uh, paper two has again, you had this United Nations topic and this is overlapping right then india's and nuclear question what are the nuclear doctrine of india right and whether india needs to revise its nuclear doctrine or not and the last topic is the recent development in foreign policy like you know what is happening in afghanistan what is happening in you know west asia like west asia like you know philistine and israel issues you know israel hamas issues right and then you know the new world order Right. These are the topics that we need to discuss in your PSI paper. And let me tell you, this paper will help you a lot as we have discussed, you know, syllabus. Thank you so much.